Well, it's happened. I've been radicalized by YouTube comments. So many people told me to buy an AMD card in the comments of my big video that blew up that I actually did. I went on eBay and I bought this, a power cooler 6600 XT Hellhound, tainted by having a Batman Funko Pop in the eBay listing. Quite amusingly, it still has Micro Center stickers on it that say $479.99. I did not pay that, I paid about $212, which is not a lot of money for a GPU these days. Let's see if it was worth it. I have to say, this is a good looking card. It looks awesome in my VR PC with both the AIO and GPU fans illuminated. I love the illuminated eye on the backplate too. The ultra edgy AMD GPU names brings me back to a simpler time when GPU boxes were beautiful and $200 for a video card was considered expensive. Now, according to Tech Power Up, this should be about 4% slower than an RTX 2080. Like this RTX 2080. But as many have pointed out, there seems to be an Nvidia bias on sites like these and they shouldn't be trusted. So we're gonna do testing with two real cards in the real world to see if we can verify or debunk that 4% deficit. A price difference makes sense if performance really is different, but comparing completed listings on eBay, the AMD card is almost 20% cheaper, making it significantly better value, even if it is slightly slower. An immediate benefit is that AMD didn't ask for my social security number and mother's maiden name when I installed the drivers. This is a significant step up over Nvidia's data collection hive, just to enable screen recording. Starting with a synthetic benchmark, 3D Mark Speedway gives us 2038 points for Nvidia and 1713 for AMD after using the built-in overclocking feature in the driver. That's a difference of about 17%. So in value, we're still ahead, but not for debunking that tech power-up rank. Now why am I starting with a small, not super popular game like the Rift Breaker? Well, it was on the product page for this GPU, so I would hope that it would be well optimized for AMD hardware. And we do see that play out. The 6600 XT averages 108 FPS and the 2080 only 100. Now this is a game that's optimized enough to run at 4K at over 100 FPS. So that 8% speed difference isn't super impactful, but it does demonstrate that the Nvidia card isn't invincible. Deathloop was also all over AMD product pages and advertising. So I'd hope the same would be true. And while it doesn't quite best the 2080, it comes so close it's barely noticeable. This is 1080p, high settings, with ray traced ambient occlusion on, and the 2080 is 2% 2 ahead. That's right, just 2%, even with RT. Extremely impressive, and a great experience. I also want to try the opposite. Two games that featured heavy NVIDIA integration, even to this day. First, I'm going to test them at 1080p high settings, then turn on upscaling and test again with RT reflections on. This test is also naturally biased against AMD because NVIDIA typically performs better in RT. Control runs incredibly well for being an NVIDIA biased title, only dropping an average of 7% of the 2080's performance and staying above 60 the whole time. Now if we turn RT on, the NVIDIA card gets a massive leg up because Control doesn't support AMD's upscaling technology, FSR. So for the 6600 XT, I'm just running the game at 720p. Even at such a low resolution, it can't keep up and drops below 60 when the 2080 doesn't. Even in this game, RT just isn't worth a drop below a playable frame rate. Cyberpunk is another one Nvidia loves to parade around, even being the title they showed off for the wildly disappointing launch of DLSS 3. See my other video for details on why that sucks. At 1080p native, neither card can keep it above 60, with the 2080 barely edging out a 5% win. Enabling both RT and upscaling, we see a wider gap, but this isn't apples to apples, because FSR uses GPU resources and DLSS uses dedicated hardware. That's also why FSR isn't exclusive to a certain brand. As we can see, enabling FSR instead of DLSS on the 2080 puts us down to 57, which drops its lead from 30% to 13%. There's no way of getting around dedicated hardware being faster even if it is anti-consumer. I have two productivity benchmarks planned. I want to test cards in the ways I use them. 3D rendering and video editing. To edit my videos, I use DaVinci Resolve. 
So that's the software I'll benchmark. The 2080 took 10 minutes and 49 seconds to render this 4K video. That sounds good until you see an M1 Max can do the same render over a minute faster on battery power. Let's see if AMD can beat either one. Actually, editing in Resolve is absolutely perfect. No issues when you're using it. But unfortunately, Resolve only supports OpenCL on AMD cards, so renders are pretty slow. Not nearly as slow as using the CPU, but much slower than Nvidia's CUDA. I'm starting to see why AMD people hate Nvidia. The upside of it not fully using the GPU is that half the time the fans don't even spin and it's completely silent. I hear the pump in the water cooler over the GPU makes a change from the 2080's horribly noisy 80mm fans. Blender is my other productivity benchmark, classroom specifically, rather than my weird personal projects. The 6600 XT took 65 seconds while the 2080 took 48, so sadly it's another win for Nvidia with a roughly 30% deficit in render time. This is the same story as Resolve because once again Blender only supports OpenCL for AMD while CUDA boosts Nvidia performance significantly. Let's ignore the crazy RT settings and productivity benchmarks and focus purely on price and traditional rasterized games, since they never marketed this card as anything other than a 1080p gaming card and no one uses RT anyway. That puts us 2.6% ahead in value adjusted performance. I'm seriously impressed. For $212, I can play a bunch of games, and not just at 1080p, but sometimes even 4K and VR with absolutely no problems. Sorry, it suddenly got very cold very quickly, so I replaced my monster shirt with a monster hoodie. I never had a single compatibility or driver problem or driver instability, and my only gripe for my personal use case is that Resolve's render performance is pretty slow. But let's be honest, how many of you actually use Resolve? Plus, the driver process is incredibly easy. There is undervolting and overclocking controls built right into the software. No login, no blasted multi-factor authentication like the NVIDIA garbage. And subjectively, I think it's quieter. I think it looks nicer. Honestly, I think it's a win overall. And out of these two, there's no question. I would definitely pick the 6600 XT if I was, say, running an old GTX 960 or an AMD APU or something like that and I needed a 1080p upgrade. I'll see you next time.